Hello girls and boys, welcome to Elementor Tips and Tricks video clips. This is the episode 2 of Dynamic Series out of 4 in total. And in this one I'm going to teach you how to create the post archive template in Elementor Pro. If you watched the previous episode, you should already know how to use dynamic fields because both single post and archive templates rely on dynamic fields exclusively. In this tutorial, I'm going to use one very handy Elementor add-on that is completely free and literally irreplaceable when it comes to building an archive template of any post type. I'm talking about the Elementor custom skin add-on that allows me to build or design the archive loop item as if I'm dealing with a single post template and a design or layout of that very item is applied as a skin to all items in a loop. This is totally opposed to how things currently work in Elementor because what you can do is to design an entire loop instead. You'll figure out the point very soon. Let's install and activate the Elementor custom skin add-on first. So plugins add new. Type into the search field LA custom skin because that's the original name of the of the, the add-on. Okay? Now install and activate. Next, from the WordPress admin, I'll select templates, add new. Template type is going to be archive, of course, and the template name will be Oh Boy Archives. All right, close the library. So, our task is to build a template that's going to be used to render the post archives, post categories, post tags, other archives, date archives, and search results page. We're gonna create one template that rules them all. Sure, you could create six different templates too if you like, but there's not much point in doing that unless that's dictated by the design or a designer. As you can see, we have all the available archive template widgets on the very top. There's only three. The first one that I'm gonna use is the archive title. If I drag and drop the widget instance, section and column will be created automatically. All I have to do is to add some margin to top and bottom, something like 100 pixels to top and 50 pixels to bottom. I will also need an archive description but hence the fact there's no ready-made widget for that purpose, I'll create my own. This time, I'll just drag and drop heading widget instance below the archive title and then choose an appropriate dynamic field. Category archives and tag archives allow you to add a description text to it. So in case this template is used to render either of these two, description text might be visible, of course, in case the text has been added. You can actually change which one of our six templates to preview in editor. If you click on that settings icon in the functional menu, that little cog icon, and expand preview settings panel, you can select what to preview. So if I select to preview category archives and then target specific category that uses description text, the archive description becomes visible. It doesn't look that nice by default, so I'm gonna make a few adjustments, like, I don't know, making the text bigger, uh, increase line height, and change color. And get some margin to the right-hand side, because narrow text block is easier to read. That's all, that's all I'm gonna do. All right, the step number two. Let's design the layout of the archive loop. This is actually where the things become interesting. I'm gonna create the section with one column first and I'll add 50 pixels margin to top and 100 pixels margin to the bottom of the section. Now if I drag and drop Elementor's default archive post widget to the stage, you can see that the posts are there. I have an option to change the skin to cards or, or full text, full content, change columns number, image position, I can customize the appearance of the loop in many ways. I can show and hide certain elements, I can even customize text, color and typography or, of each and every element. However, beside the zillions of options, I'm not allowed to do one simple thing, 
to change the layout of the single item. For example, I cannot add a custom field value or separate post metadata or design my own read more button or rearrange elements or maybe add some motion effects. By my humble opinion, the way that things work with an archive post widget in Elementor are completely wrong. And that's why I'm going to use Elementor custom skin add-on to design my single loop item. Let's go back to the content tab layout panel and instead of classic cards or full content, I'm going to choose custom skin option. That option belongs or has been added by an Elementor custom skin add-on. You don't have it by default. All I need to do now is to click on create edit a loop template button. As you can see, there's even a new tab added to existing Elementor tabs. And of course, I'm going to add a new loop. So the template type is going to be loop and the template name will be oh boy archive loop item. And I'll just close the library at the end. So let's now quickly put something together. I ain't going to pay too much attention to design or waste too much time on details. I'll add a section with one column first, then insert another inner section widget inside. My plan is to add the featured image to the background of the section column. So I'll highlight the parent section column, select style tab, choose classic background type, and then from dynamic menu, select featured image. Position will be sender sender, repeat will be no repeat, and the size should be covered. The left hand side column should hold the post date info and I'll just drag and drop heading widget instance first. From the list of dynamic fields I'll select post date, as simple as that. I was about to rotate the text by using a little CSS rule, a custom one, which includes writing mode property and some rotation and transformation. I just want to create an element that's not of a standard shape, so to speak. In order to ensure the readability, I'll have to add the background to the date box. But if I add the background, I have to change the text color too, so white text on the red background will be fine. Ah, yes. I'm going to make the text box inline position because that's how the boundaries fit the amount of content, which looks much better than before. And I want to make the date box stick to the right hand side of the column to actually look like it's an integral part of the rest of the content. And of course a little bit of padding would be nice too, otherwise the text looks like it's stuck. So something like a few pixels, like 10 pixels on each side of the box might help. Yeah, that's it. Okay, the right hand side column should house the post reading time, post title, post info like post author and post comments number. And then below post info I'll add post summary text and of course at the end read more button. I was talking about the post reading time custom field in the episode 1 of dynamic series, so if you did watch it you already know how to create the custom fields key value pair. In order to avoid any readability issue, I'll add a white background to the right hand side column and of course some padding all around the text, all around the content. From now on, I'll just drag and drop a heading widget instance for, for each and every of my loop item elements and assign different dynamic field that corresponds to the value that I'm about to display. As I said, the reading time info will be in top and in order to pick the value of my reading time custom field, I'll use key name which is reading time. The value is going to be pulled in automatically. And all I gotta do is to prepend reading time value with reading time text. Now the post title. With this one, I simply select post title from the list of dynamic fields. Post author and post comments number should be placed below the title. I'll make these two stand one next to each other and for that very purpose both of them have to be inline position elements, which is easy to be done in Elementor. And finally, 
I have to assign corresponding dynamic values to these two. Okay, now the post summary text, uh, which looks awful by default, so I'm gonna have to style it up a little bit, like change color, uh, line height, etc. If you didn't notice, I had to pick the different wrapping element for a different dynamic field because it doesn't make sense to use the title tag for a post date or comments number. That's not good for SEO. Uh, the read more link. My read more link will be an icon button without any text. So I'm going to pick the icon, make it big enough and remove any padding from the button. I also need to change the, the icon color and hover color because the default ones are not what I want. Read more link doesn't need to be the text, it's not a WordPress rule. It's gonna look much better if replaced by an icon. Okay, <coughs> and let's also add a nice divider between the title and post metadata. I'm gonna pick slashes. And I'm gonna make it transparent a little bit because full black is kinda too strong, which gives too much accent to the element that's not supposed to be stressed. And finally, I want to add some padding atop of the inner section so I can assure a little bit more exposure of the post featured image. That's how the featured image will be visible on the left hand side and all the way atop of the other elements of my loop item. At the end, there's a very important step left to be done and which is to assign a proper dynamic link to each of my loop item elements. It doesn't happen automatically, okay? So I'm gonna link the post title to the post URL. Then the author name, of course, this one is supposed to be linked to the author archive page. Comments number should be linked to the comments URL. And finally, our read more icon which is supposed to be linked to the post single template. That's all. So my work here is done. This is how my loop item is supposed to look like. That's the design or a layout. Let's finally publish. Where do you want to display your template? There, there's no need to add any conditions here. Just hit the save and close button. That's all. Next step, let's go back to our archive template because we have to apply the skin that we just created to the archive posts widget layout. If I try to select the skin or a template, it's not found on the list yet. This is because we have to refresh the page first. However, we should save our archive template. If I refresh without saving, all the things I did here will be lost. And now is actually time to handle the template display conditions. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I'm going to use my archive template to render five other templates too. I said that this is the one that rules them all. So where do you want to display your template? You better ask me where I don't want to do that because I'll add six conditions. First, the post archives. Second one, categories. Which categories exactly? Well, all of them, all of post categories. The third condition, tags. Likewise, all of them. Fourth condition, other archive, and of course, all of them too. Fifth will be date archive, and the last one is going to be search results page. And that should be it. Save and close. And now refresh the page. Okay, here is our custom skin template. I'll just have to change columns number to one. And voila, my new archive template is here. Possibilities are literally endless. You can easily add some motion effects to the loop item if you want to go crazy 
but essentially this is what the Elementor custom skin add-on is about. By my humble opinion, that very add-on is what saves the pretty much weak Elementor's archive post with its ass. This is definitely how things should work when it comes to laying out an archive template. This is awesome and outstanding add-on for Elementor. The best and the most useful one that I've came across. And this is where our lesson ends. Hopefully you have learned something you didn't know yet. Just to mention that for the purpose of this and all other tutorials of Dynamic series, I'm using Hello Elementor and Hello Elementor Child Teams whose download links can be found in the description below. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumb up, comment, share, spread the word. Anything you do will be fine. And if you do so, I'll give my best to publish more videos. Stay tuned. Thanks for your support.